a lot of the times there's so much new age content and there's so much manifestation work out there that we get a lot of dopamine from knowledge. Okay. But I'm going to tell you that one of the things that I see that is the biggest, biggest roadblock for you is thinking that knowledge is thinking of thinking knowledge is inner work and it is 100% not. And when I look at you from the cup analogy, too much knowledge is actually filling you up with too much energy because the more you consume, you might not be a materialistic consumer, but you might be consuming all of this stuff, you know, my way, better way, her way, his way, the church's way, you know, the gym's way, the food's way, like you could be just constantly and that can affect your ability to lighten up. Because the one thing that I know about knowledge is the reason why we're all addicted to it is because we get a huge dopamine hit. Secondary, we get an oxytocin hit because it resonates. Resonate is another word for residence or residence is another word for familiar. Familiar is another word for family. So when you hit truth, it's always going to feel like love. It's always going to feel like an aha moment. But that is not the healing that you're looking for. That isn't the, um, that's not the inner work. You know, I, I thought that too, because you feel so much better. And now you have this knowledge. And immediately, here's how I know that it's not inner work. It's because what you're going to want to do with that knowledge is you're going to want to share it with someone else immediately. Or you're going to want, or you're going to think of someone who needs this knowledge. And that's an ego. It's a way to bypass you. Because as soon as you get something that resonates like hardcore truth, you don't believe that you need to do anything else with it or learn anything else about it because you've got it and you feel good for up to three days after you have a big aha and it's a trap because that that resonance is bringing the information to light and you're connecting with the frequency of light and very quickly we can build that into our knowledge base but most of the people that I, that attract, that are attracted to me because like I'm, you know, formerly been in my masculine, I formerly been kind of a, a loner. I've been formerly, you know, like, um, had to be very responsible in my life. Like I've had a lot of burden on me. So I tend to attract women who are like me at different stages because like attracts light. Same with the men. I will attract men who are acting as the masculine aspect of me. So it's like, I I know you guys because you're me on some level fraction. Some of you are ahead of me over here and some of you are ahead of me over here, but it doesn't matter because we all have something that we understand fundamentally, but it isn't, that's when you feel better about hearing something, that's not the work. That's why in this particular boot camp, I'm not working to get you to feel better. I'm working you to, I'm, pushing you to feel worse, not worse in a way where you don't feel like that, that you're not getting the information, but I don't want you to have certainty in the information. I want the certainty to come from the app, the, the application, the practice, because that's, that was my mistake too. As soon as I had my Kundalini experience in 2009, I went straight into teaching because I believed that I was complete as far as any question that I had, I could answer myself. But that Kundalini experience did not heal my subconscious programming, like my earth soul, the one that's been downloading and absorbing and sponging, you know, all of these collective belief systems, family belief systems, religious belief systems, then all my traumas in there, all my, all my, um, you know, abuses in there, all my self abuses in there. So I'm literally walking around feeling like I'm light as a cloud for a few years with this giant heavy backpack that I couldn't see or feel really until I would manifest something in my reality. And, and then it would be like, huh, how come I can't just fix this or put my hands on this person and, and, and they're, um, you know, healed. Because the thing about someone who has uh, access to universal knowledge, I only have access to universal knowledge in a state of neutrality. 
Okay, this I'm just laying you the, out this out there because I know a lot of you guys are also psychic and you also have a lot of gifts. So this might resonate with you as well. But what we don't realize is that the law, the the idea of quantum entanglement. As soon as I am intimate, and I don't mean sex, but I mean intimately entangled with a friendship, with a business partner, with a boyfriend, with my children, with my home, with my car, anytime, anything that there is an attachment to out of co-creation or co-dependency, then what happens is that person, place, or thing now is in my blind spot. And because it's entangled with me, I cannot read it from a state of neutrality because now there's an emotional, there's an emotional meaning to that. Like my house has an emotional meaning to me. My car has an emotional meaning to me. My friend has a, but just a client that's coming in that's here's take some money. It's completely in a state of neutrality. And this is why you are finding that you are a better friend and coach and um, guide and messenger to people that you don't know. Like, you know, the, the people that love me the most are complete strangers on the internet. And the people that I that I feel the most seen and heard by are complete strangers on the internet. And the reason why is because as soon as someone comes into your field, well, now there's an entanglement where, and now it's, it's like a, it's the, the two become one. And now if there is some sort of need or there's some sort of issue, it creates a block in my flow and it also will create a block in their flow. So as soon as I would date somebody, I could read all of their mind, which was ick, which is why, like, you know, it took me a really long time to, I, I got divorced in 2014. And I've never been remarried. And I'm not saying it's because, you know, I can read everybody's mind because here's the deal. As soon as there is an, an emotional connection with someone past the point of, oh, I really like you. We should hang out sometime. Important, like I might want to do some sort of life with this person. I might want to date this person. I might want to. I As soon as I can see myself in their world or in their timeline, I no longer can read their thoughts. I no longer could put my hands on them and heal them. And so for me, it was like, I just wanted to keep everybody here because that's the way I was going to save the world. I mean, very naive. Okay. Even though I was in my thirties, but I didn't know what was happening. All I know is I was being like, I just had, it, it was like an urge. It was like a, a, an addiction to being of service. Okay. And I know you guys have experienced this on some level, because as soon as you wake up, you feel completely homesick, you feel completely lost, you feel separated, but you also have this desire to like help people heal and wake up and know themselves. So you get it. But the issue is, is that when something is in resonance, there's a quantum entanglement. And so you are not going to now see yourself without that information. So you might see that you don't need to apply that because the thing is, as soon as you receive the dopamine hit, and as soon as you receive the oxytocin hit, okay, you feel complete and that can last an oxytocin hit, like one really good hug or one profound aha moment. You guys can last up to three days. Okay. Um, there. Okay. So from that being said is that three days might give your, give you the impression that that so-called issue that you were seeking for or that you found or that you saw was complete. And that this is why when it blindsides you or you manifest it again, or it doesn't work, that's when you're left with the disappointment, okay? And that's when that, that, th that seeks, the seeking starts, okay? So immediately you're gonna go seek for another three day hit. Oh, and this is the spiritual trap, okay? And I have seen so many strong women, especially. I don't see my my guys doing this so much, okay? And and again, whether they're in their feminine energy, if they're emasculated, even if they're the alpha guy or even the beta super genius, like they are not, they're not seeking so like insanely, the next hit of the dopamine from the, 
the um, internet. But what they are doing is they are feeling the completion. They are putting it into some sort of practical application, but then they're assuming that that is true. And so then they might be like continuing to try to work that or build that better. And so they kind of get fixated on like certain truths. And, and again, it's, there's no right way to do it. Now, the second you start to get in your feminine energy, which is what this class is going to be about. And guys, when you really start to get into your masculine energy, I'm going to teach you how to direct those impulses, those addictions, those, those curiosities, those, that seeking, that frustration, that disappointment, that, that hope drug. I'm going to show you how to direct it back to yourself. Like I'm going to give you in this class, I'm going to give you the greatest gift that anybody has given you is the tools to bring it back because you cannot trust your feelings. You are not healed forever when you feel good. Okay. Just like if you eat food, you're going to be hungry again. And what we want to do is we want to get to a place where you and your body are not in a constant feast or famine. You and your body are not constantly in love and hate. You and your body are not constantly in ignore. And then I have to give you a bunch of attention because you're sick. So it's like, if you notice that most people that are, have some sort of health issue, okay, or have some sort of physical issue, or have a an emotional issue with their body. Because like, there's a lot of girls that have hired me over the years that are like more fit than I am, but their mind won't let them see that, okay? They like, they eat one thing. And because, you know, when we eat something, like we feel, well, immediately they will feel horrific about their body. And so it's not a, it's not like a physical, like, oh, I've got this 20 pounds. And then I've met people that have 60, 70 pounds that are just like, I'm, just want to lose 10. So there's no right or wrong here when it comes to mental illness, when, when it comes to how we see ourselves, like we've been programmed to dislike ourselves. We have been programmed to reject and deny and be in delusion and suffer and all these things. And so that's what I mean when, when you go seeking this information, a lot of times you'll get what you're looking for, but it, it wasn't the inner work that was going to change the blueprint because we've got to change in order for you to just not have to worry about like some people just don't have to worry about money. Like they could buy whatever they want. They don't have to look at prices. Some people can eat whatever they want and they don't have to worry about their body health. They can, you know, be out in the world and don't have to worry about allergies. They can don't have to ask the maitre d' is there gluten in that? Like those are two different mindsets and I want you to have both of those because that's when the world gets really fun. When you see a child playing, they aren't like, wait, is this glu is there gluten in this? Unless they have an allergy already. Okay. And when they want to buy a toy, they're not thinking, does do I have the money for this toy? That's where we want to return back to is that entitled, grateful child that knows that they can go out into the world and they have one less problem of how they feel in their bodies. Okay. That's what I want this to be for you. So whether you get that feeling and then it takes you a few months of recalibrating, because remember, enter, you're going to have the energy manifestation of the perfect body before you're going to have the physical manifestation, because just like you could have a trauma and you could be in fight or flight for two or three days, and then you don't get sick from that trauma until a month later, because all of that energy caused a, a ripple effect, but it doesn't physically manifest as a detox or the illness until sometimes three weeks later, sometimes. And again, it all has to do with if you're in a constant state of fight or flight, you'll notice the people that are in the, the greatest fight or flight don't get sick. Okay. And the reason why is they can't, they cannot. I used to think that for so long, like when I was in my 20s, I'm like, I just don't get sick. I don't get sick. I'm not allowed to get sick. But what I realized is that I was in such a level of fight or flight that my adrenaline was going so hard, so fast that the only way that I would get sick is if one of my other kids got sick or something. And then I would notice I was like that as soon as I would notice that I wasn't sick or they were. But again, if you're if you are in constant fight or flight, 
you will be anxious, you will be worried, you will have mental warfare, you will have lots of issues happening around you, but you might not get sick. And if you do, it might be something that you can just suck it up. Like you might be dealing with some chronic fatigue or a chronic pain, but you won't necessarily attract something that is going to like knock you off your grid. And the reason why is because your body is saying we can't afford to be sick. Okay. So when I see someone get sick, I actually see it as a blessing because that means that you're in a space now where you could truly take care of what it is that this is so this may happen you may notice that as you go through this all of a sudden you might get like wretchedly sick or you might get a new body situation but that's like ooh, something for me to pay attention to so the way that manifestation and reality is actually created is based on what you care the most about okay now what you care about most about usually has the most resistance this is why we don't heal is you care so much about maybe what your body isn't doing that you're caring in a resistant way. So I want to show you guys how to flow all of your caring, loving energy to your body and then get out of the way so that it can follow your new script. Because ultimately, if you have not taken the time to reprogram your first seven years, which usually is the first 21 years, because we tend to repeat cycles three times before we get the, uh, we, we get the memo. Okay. Sometimes longer for me. Um, most people don't truly wake up until they're in their thirties, but this, this new generation is waking up six, 15, 16 years old. So lucky for them. Okay. Because like when we ask it's given, so our children, are going to get this way faster than we are. This is why you don't need to worry about them so much and just become the influence. Your best parenting is the best, is you being the best influence of a happy, healthy, joyful, abundant, free, beautiful being. That's the best parenting in the world, okay? So this idea of...